this evening I, I show you my experience uh, in this new field and uh, um, uh, the only problem is the time because uh, uh, this field is very, very uh, uh, full of information and uh, today is not possible to analyze everything in deep. But we start with a uh, um, short presentation. Sorry. Okay. So, um, the, the graph material are uh, divided in four types of graph material. We have autogenous bone, auto, autograph human bone, xenograph, and alloplast. The property of uh, autogenous uh, bone is osteoconduction, osteoinduction, osteoproliferation, and the xenograph and the alloplast have only oste osteoconduction. So, uh, what what are the most used the graphic materials? Uh, the most used are like xenographic and alloplast. Uh, they are the 87% of the market and the only property is the osteoconduction. What is the osteoconduction? The osteoconduction is the ability to, uh, to produce a scaffold where it's possible for the cell to, to, um, uh, to start uh, from the peripheral areas to the defect in order to generate new bone. And every this material are hydroxypatite, natural or synthetic. So the osteoconduction is the, the ability to stay, sustain the new bone graft and uh, um, sorry, the bone grow. And uh, for example, in this image, it's possible to see this image is from Geishler uh, website. It's possible after nine years to um, to see the uh, the granules uh, from uh, um, xenograph material completely surrounded by bone. But uh, there are inside the regeneration. So the problem with this uh, hydroxypatite is uh, the crystals are not, uh, are too large, it's impossible to uh, be remodeled or absorbed from the bone. What happened after 20 years? This is some my image from uh, uh, my X-ray. Uh, this is a, a socket preservation made 20 years ago. And uh, uh, in the X-ray, it's possible to found something strange because uh, uh, this uh, uh, socket preservation have uh, a, a white spot where uh, you can found uh, the granules after 20 years. In this image, um, courtesy of uh, Dr. Robertucci from Rome, uh, the Dr. Robertucci uh, made uh, a regeneration eight years ago, and uh, uh, the last year have the, the possibility to, to make a, a, a biopsy in this zone. And uh, when we open after eight years a flap, it's possible to observe some granules, white, white granules on the surface of the new bone, on the bone. And uh, what is this material? This material is uh, a material, is the presence of the uh, graph material in the middle of the bone. And uh, this, uh, um, this material is like a stones inside uh, the bone. So why we use uh, this material? We use this material because we try to use, to copy the natural. So uh, the alveolar bone is made from 65% of uh, HA and 35% uh, collagen and proteins. So the 87% of the market is made from a copy of the natural and we try to copy using HA. So we test uh, the presence of uh, uh, using a, a xenograph material. And in our test, in this image, uh, we have a, a histology of this test. It's possible to observe uh, the granules in, uh, in, in pink and in red, the new bone. So after six months, we found the 24% of new bone. The other, uh, the other part of this histology, there are like stones. Obviously, uh, if you place an implant in this bone, uh, we have a contact bone implant uh, very thin, not uh, 
like 100% of the surface. Why we decided to analyze the tooth graft, the tooth as a graft? Well, we decided because um, we, we, uh, we, we know the tooth have uh, two properties, the osteoconduction and the osteoinduction. What is the osteoinduction? The osteoinduction is the ability of uh, 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 material uh, to be able to stimulate the cells uh, to produce new bone. And uh, um, why happened this uh, osteoinduction? Because uh, uh, inside uh, the alveolar bone, for example, uh, because the, alveolar, the, the bone is able to have osteoinduction, we have 65% of HA plus 35% collagen and proteins. And this part, the, the proteins are able to stimulate the new bone. So what change if you have a, a, a same situation, for example, a socket preservation after six months? On the right side, on the left side, we have the image uh, we have seen before. And uh, this is the same situation after six months, and we use only uh, a dentin. Uh, in this case, uh, we have new bone, 56 56% um, of new bone after six months. If you use a, a, a xenograft material, we have only the 24. So obviously, if you place an implant in this site, we have a contact with one implant very uh, thin. And in this case, we have a 55% of bone uh, able to have a contact with, a, with an implant inserted in this, in this site. So the difference between a tooth and, uh, and bone is very thin. Uh, for, exa for example, enamel uh, is uh, completely different from alveolar bone because uh, uh, the 96% of HA with high density and the crystals of the HA is uh, uh, a prism the big dimension, with a big dimension. But the dentin have the same quantity of uh, inorganic parts uh, in, uh, and the dentin is made in HA with a low density and uh, um, the alveolar bone have the same quantity of HA but the dimension of the um, of the HA is a flat and nano dimension. It's uh, like 10 times uh, uh, liter than uh, the dentin. And uh, the, the organic part is the same. We have uh, the 35% collagen and proteins. But uh, if uh, we analyze it, uh, this part, we have uh, the 35% is organic, 90% of the, this 35% is collagen, and 10% is not collagen protein. This non collagen protein is very similar between dentin and bone, and uh, in, uh, in this image, it's possible to observe uh, what, uh, um, uh, what uh, uh, proteins are. So the proteins in common with bone, uh, what we do? They, they create uh, everything we want uh, for a GBR. So for example, stimulate the angiogenesis, uh, stimulate the production of mineralized tissue, stimulates uh, the osteoblast differenti differentiation, and uh, uh, increase the numbers of stem cells. So um, this is possible to conserve, to, to, cons to conserve the, the tooth for a long time. In this analysis, uh, um, we analyze, uh, not we, but uh, Smith and Schultz analyzed uh, the presence of growth factor in uh, uh, neolithic age uh, tooth uh, and middle age tooth and present tooth uh, for three different growth factor, insulin, EGF2, BMP2, and TGF beta. And the surprise is uh, the data because after a um, thousand years, it's possible to find the same quantity of uh, uh, the proteins inside the tooth. Why is possible uh, this result? Uh, this result is possible because we, we can measure the, the dentin uh, like uh, uh, this wall. Uh, every brick, uh, white brick, uh, is uh, HA and the colored brick are the proteins. So the HA is very, they are the tissue in nature and 
uh, is able to protect uh, the protein. So um, we have two effects. The first one is the protection during the time. And the second one is uh, uh, if you want to, um, to free these proteins, it's necessary to reabsorb the, the uh, surface of the granules. And uh, when uh, uh, the dentin will be uh, reabsorbed, the proteins will be free. So um, we analyzed uh, um, a lot of uh, articles uh, in literature, and uh, uh, it's interesting to observe the difference between the analysis of the clinical cases made in literature uh, from 1967 and uh, 2050, and uh, 2050, 20, 2020. Um, the articles in humans are uh, double, double and uh, uh, that indicate uh, the possibility to use the tooth uh, with uh, new devices like uh, to transform and the other devices uh, on the market. So how we got the TT? Um, in this image it's possible to observe uh, the difference between the dentin, the bone, very very similar in, the, in this image, and the xenograph material. Xenograph material is a completely different to the bone and to the dentin. So we start uh, to, to try to, to find something, um, uh, a device able to, to use the tooth uh, for this reason. We found uh, uh, we start the test uh, in University of Milan, in Polytechnic of Milan, and we divided the, the test uh, in two levels. The first one is to find the procedure, and uh, the second um, step is uh, the test with the procedure. So we analyzed uh, the demineralization, uh, the morphological evaluation, the content, uh, atomic content, the DS analysis, uh, uh, etc. And in the second way, uh, we analyzed the evaluation of the viability of the cells and uh, the production of the um, osteocalcin and the presence of uh, proteins uh, after the treatment. So, for example, uh, obviously, um, we spend uh, like uh, one year in these studies, but uh, uh, today we have a, a very short time and it's impossible to explain every uh, test uh, we made, but uh, um, it's possible to observe in this image uh, if we use a different procedure, we have different results on the surface of the granules. So uh, we analyzed, for example, HEL, we analyzed uh, ADTA, uh, alcohol, ethylic, um, ethylic alcohol, and uh, um, uh, I don't remember all the, the tests. Um, the surface obviously is completely different. Uh, this is the, the tooth, not treat, untreated tooth. And uh, uh, you can observe the difference between each different um, procedure. So uh, the other different selection criteria was the wettability, uh, the ability to create uh, a granules able to um, to have a high wettability to, um, to, um, to have the, the possibility to use in surgery, in surgery with a uh, very high and uh, with a uh, handling, uh, interesting handling. And uh, um, another aspect is the biocompatibility, the cell adhesion, and uh, the bacteria free. So we analyzed every aspect and, uh, for example, in the Bayer compatibility, it's possible to observe, sorry, it's possible to observe uh, the native dentin, uh, untreated dentin, uh, the surface, this is white, um, black spot are the cells on the surface and uh, we have a uh, um, um, certain number of the cells, but uh, with the treated uh, dentin, we have a, um, very high number of the cells on the surface. The same thing with the NML. The NML untreated is uh, without any cells on the surface. And uh, after the treatment is very similar to the xenograph uh, with, uh, with a shape and uh, uh, with the numbers of cells on the surface. Another aspect uh, uh, we analyzed uh, in that studies is the presence of the uh, 
the, the proteins after the treatment. And uh, uh, we analyze, for example, the presence of the collagen, the presence of the BMP2. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, after these uh, uh, steps, uh, uh, we produce uh, a, um, a device able to transform the tooth uh, in this way. So the first step uh, to use the tooth is the cleaning the tooth. Uh, we use uh, in in this movie is uh, is possible to understand. We use a um, high speed uh, bar um, diamond bar, and uh, we clean the surface. And after we cut the the tooth. Um, okay. So we clean to uh, we we need to eliminate uh, the filling and the cement uh, on the prosthesis uh, or the the uh, the other uh, material not uh, uh, not uh, from from the tooth. Okay, and now we cut. Uh, we use a disc, um, and we cut uh, because uh, inside uh, the device is possible to use. Uh, um a uh, low speed uh, grinder but the low speed grinder have a uh, little space uh, inside so we need to cut uh, um, the roots and uh, uh, another reason why we cut the roots is that um, to be able to clean uh, the endodontical uh, material so we cut and after we use a, a clamp to to stabilize the, the tooth and uh, to clean uh, inside with a bar. In this way. We made um, uh, 100 tests, histological tests, and in no one we found something uh, not uh, uh, from, the, the, from the tooth origin for example, gutta perca or cement. And uh, um, I suggest to clean with a big attention. And sometimes I use a, a, a Google to understand if it's uh, completely, uh, completely free from, from this material. The second step is dry uh, and is to dry the tooth because it's very is very important to um, to have the tooth uh, very uh, clean and dry because uh, if it's uh, wet uh, the device is not to work and uh, um, okay this is the device uh, we have a, a grinder, the grinder, we place uh, inside the grinder, the tooth. And uh, we insert the, the little pieces of the tooth inside. We close the, the grinder, we insert the grinder. And uh, after we insert the single use unit with the liquids and the maker, So we pierce on the surface to activate the liquids. And after that, we close the lid and we push the button to start the procedure. At the end of the procedure, it's possible after 20, 25 minutes, it's possible to find this material. Okay. Uh, because the, the procedure is uh, 30 minutes long, I suggest to do one thing. Um, normally, I, I do this procedure in my, my clinic in this way, uh, because uh, obviously it's uh, impossible, for example, in my clinic is normal, uh, but uh, I think it's impossible to lose uh, 30 minutes uh, to wait uh, the material. So for example, I made an extraction at nine and I place another patient during the time uh, to the procedure. And after 30 minutes, uh, I start the GBR with TT. So I save time and I save money. 
Uh, two of the most common uh, mistakes are to place inside uh, the tooth with uh, prosthesis or wet teeth. Okay, so at this point, uh, we start with the clinical test. Uh, we made a test with the ships and uh, we place a, a cage inside the mandible of the ships and we um, insert in some, some cage uh, a dentin treated and uh, untreated dentin in the other, uh, in the other cage. And uh, uh, this is the control. Uh, this is untreated uh, dentin and after two months, uh, it's possible to observe uh, we have a granules without uh, dentin without a uh, new bone surrounding the the dentin only in this part is possible to observe a little quantity of bone also here but uh, if you observe the same situation the same chip uh, and the same time with the dentin treated dentin it's possible to observe a big quantity of bone uh, surrounding the granules so after that, in February 2016, uh, we start with the, the first patient. Um, this patient, uh, we have an image for this patient because uh, she is a, a vegan uh, woman. And uh, we have a, a, a prototype. This is the prototype of TTT. And uh, she wants to use uh, absolutely the tooth. And uh, she don't want to use uh, a xenograph material because I, I use normally uh, in the last 10, 20 years of xenograph material, but uh, she don't want to use uh, uh, something from animals. And uh, uh, so we use uh, the, the dentin of uh, this root. We have a fracture of the uh, 36, uh, um, of the root of the 36. So um, we made a, a GBR, uh, alveolar socket preservation. And uh, this is the result after four months. We place uh, an implant and we made a, a biopsy after four months. And uh, uh, this is the healing after the healing of the implant. And uh, this is the comparison after four months. It's possible to note the presence of some granules on the surface. And this is the result after four months. This is not important. Uh, this is not a, a result, uh, interesting uh, clinical result, but uh, uh, is a very interesting follow-up. So after 56 months, uh, the result is very stable. Uh, the tissue is, uh, um, is like a, a natural bone. This is another, uh, another alveolar ridge preservation. Uh, we have an um, implant failure. Uh, we lose a, a lot of material uh, around this implant. And uh, this implant is very, uh, very near to the alveolar uh, nerve and the alveolar canal. And uh, so uh, this is the image with a tissue surrounding the implant, soft tissue surrounding the implant. Uh, we remove the soft tissue, we remove the implant, and uh, we have a communication with the, uh, the alveolar canal. And uh, so we place a, a, a collagen membrane uh, on the dip. We, we insert the material uh, from, from the tooth extracted in the side in the other side and uh, we place uh, a collagen membrane on the top we place a, a stitch and uh, we start uh, in this situation and this is after six months so i would like to to focus your attention here because uh, here there was a, a very big uh, hole and after six months it's impossible to understand where was the wall. And this is the x-ray uh, result after six months. This is uh, the, um, the result uh, of the histology after six months and the new bone was 63% and the two transformer was 0.1. So all the granules, all these granules was completely absorbed and create a real 
absolutely newborn. Okay, uh, this is another case very interesting because it's a uh, alveolar ridge preservation using Decidus 2. The Decidus teeth of this patient, she's a young woman, 26 years old, and uh, it's impossible to, um, to use these teeth because uh, these teeth are, uh, have a, a prosthesis and also uh, they have a big um, endodontical treatment. So uh, we decided to use uh, uh, the wisdom tooth, but the patient don't want, and then the, the, the mother, after two days, come back in my clinic and tell us uh, we have a, um, in a plastic container, this plastic container, uh, they have a, a, um, a decidus teeth for, from, uh, from this young woman. So we, we choose some, someone of this uh, teeth, and uh, we cut and we use it to, to be, uh, to, to make the regeneration. This is the regeneration, the surgery. This is after three months. And this is the um, uh, X-ray analysis after three months, after six months. And uh, uh, this is the uh, sagittal um, transaxial um, image after three months and five months. It's possible to observe um, it's possible to observe the density of the bone after five months. So we open a flap, we place two implants, and uh, this is the result, uh, histological result. It's very interesting to understand. Uh, this is a, a dentin uh, completely surrounded by new bone. This is the new bone. This is the osteocyte, and in yellow is the animal. It's interesting to understand uh, the animal is completely surrounded by new bone and uh, um, it's possible this uh, result because the animal after the treatment is very, very similar to xenograft material. So if you use an animal, is uh, uh, like a dentin, is a um, uh, bone, uh, with uh, uh, mineralization, and uh, uh, the uh, enamel is like a xenograft. So in other images, it's possible to observe uh, a piece of dentin with uh, an enamel, with the crack, uh, the fracture of the treatment, and uh, completely surrounded by new bone. Uh, we have a lot of osteocyte in this site, and also uh, this part of enamel completely surrounded by new bone. And this is the result at the end of the treatment after 24 months of follow-up. This is another alveolar ridge presentation, uh, preservation. Uh, this is the situation before, and this is a situation after, um, I don't remember, 30, 30 months, probably. This is a, a big defect. Uh, we lose like 10 millimeters uh, uh, in vertical dimension, and. Uh, probably 20 millimeters in uh, horizontal dimension. Uh, and uh, it's possible to observe it, to compare this image with this image after two months, because uh, uh, we remove the tooth and uh, we have uh, on, the, um, on the maxilla, uh, we have a white spot. Uh, so it's possible to compare exactly the same uh, section of the, uh, of the CBCT, and uh, um, this is after only two months. After two months, it's possible to observe a high quantity of new bone, and after six months, we have an a, a implant inserted inside. Um, and this is what we what uh, what happened. This is after two months. We open a flap. It's possible to observe. Uh, um, uh, material with a lot of granules, and uh, uh, this material was uh, very uh, dense uh, and it's possible to insert the two implants without any problems, uh, without a stability, and uh, uh, with a stability. And after four months, it's possible to observe uh, the presence of uh, a, a cortical new bone everywhere. So, where here there are granules, after four months, we have a uh, uh, cortical new bone. So 40, 40, 48 months uh, of follow-up. This is the result, uh, clinical result. 
And uh, this is another case, very interesting, because uh, in this case, uh, we remove uh, this tooth, or we have a big uh, defect uh, for the distal root, and uh, we remove this tooth, uh, we use the inflammatory tissue uh, to cover uh, the defect, and we place inside uh, the granules, uh, we use a membrane to cover, and to cover on the top, uh, we place an uh, inflammatory tissue, and this is the result after four months, and uh, when we open the flap, uh, this is the tissue. It's possible to observe the difference between uh, before and after. This is the only uh, all new tissue, and we can insert a, a big implant, uh, five millimeters of diameter, and uh, we have uh, a, um, a new prosthesis. And uh, this is a, a sinus lift uh, to understand what happened uh, in the sinus. So we place uh, a material and uh, when uh, we open the flap, we insert the prosthesis and the result is that the, the material will be transformed in, uh, 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 in a bone. It's impossible to, um, uh, to found the difference between the bone and the material uh, inserted inside the sinus. So uh, this is a, a, um, our book. Uh, we have a, a Italian version and uh, probably in, in March uh, we'll be able to uh, produce the English version. And uh, uh, I, I, um, I show you some cases from uh, the clinical cases from this book because uh, uh, from this point uh, I show only my cases and uh, it's not uh, uh, only my hand uh, this, uh, this analysis and uh, we have uh, a lot of friends uh, they made a uh, uh, very interesting cases uh, using TT uh -huh. and uh, mm, um, Okay, um, this is another case from a, a Spain a friend, and uh, this is an Italian friend, um, this is a, a Singapore friend, and uh, this is another Italian friend. So every case is very interesting, is, uh, and uh, is not only in my hand. Um, so we have a question. Um, They tell me if it's possible to mix uh, uh, the xenograph material with uh, uh, um, a dentin. Yes, it's possible to, to, to mix. And uh, um, because uh, sometimes uh, when we remove a root, uh, it's not possible uh, to, to produce uh, a lot of material because sometimes uh, uh, with a prosthesis, uh, uh, the roots are very thin and probably the defect is very big. So uh, we insert the, the dentin like a boost in the regeneration and uh, we mix with uh, xenograph material, for example. But uh, what do you see in histologies after four months? This histology was made from uh, 11 different clinics. And uh, um, this is a case very interesting because uh, is, uh, is exactly on the topic, uh, because they tell me if it's possible to mix uh, dentin and uh, xenograph material. This image is a, a histology after four months. Uh, in, uh, um, in this alveolar socket preservation, uh, we insert 50% uh, of uh, uh, xenograph material in pink and in red, uh, the 50% of the dentin. So what happened after four months? After four months, we have a new bone 24%, dentin was 3% and BIOS 38. Uh, very interesting is the image after, after four months because it's possible to observe uh, the dentin was, I remember, 50% dentin and 50% BIOS. Um, the dentin was uh, also resorbent. So the granules inside um, create a new space for a new bone. The other granules, the uh, xenograph material are not resorbent, so uh, they don't create 
uh, a space for a newborn, but only uh, the newborn is able to surround uh, these granules. But uh, if you use uh, uh, dentin only, what happened after six months? Four months or six months? Because our analysis is made uh -huh. after four months or after six months. In this case, uh, we have two different uh, histologies and uh, the total bone was 46% uh, and new bone 40% on the left side, 42% on the right side and the two transformer so the dentin was only 6% and 4%. So it's a big difference because in that case, uh, we have only the 24% of new bone. In that case, we have 46%. So in a lot of images, we can observe this uh, uh, situation. Uh, this is a granule of dentin. Uh, this is a new bone uh, on C. Uh, we have the uh, osteocyte uh, and in D we have uh, the uh, core of uh, uh, calcification. So we have a lot of this image. Uh, what means? Uh, it means uh, the ability of the dentin to be osteoconductive material and uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when the dentin will be osteoconductive, will be when happened this thing. Uh, this thing is uh, uh, when the, the osteocyte, the, the osteoclast, um, eat uh, the dentin and free the proteins. So we have this image, a very, very interesting image because we have the granule with the, the A and uh, surrounded completely from new bone. And uh, here there is an osteocyte uh, eating uh, uh, the dentin. The same thing is in this image, it's very clear. This is a multinucleated uh, osteoclast uh, and uh, able to uh, reabsorb the surface of the ground. This is another image of the granules completely surrounded by new bone. Uh, and uh, in this image uh, is uh, Interesting because uh, we have a, a, a dentin, a granule of dentin in transition. What's what's mean the transition? Uh, because this granule was this. So only here uh, is the residual uh, dentin, and uh, in the other part was uh, completely absorbed and substituted by. Uh, a new bone and uh, in D we have osteocyte and this is a transition um, substitution and this is this is uh, the uh, tubules of dentin. So uh, we made uh, 129 histologies and uh, uh, we divided these histologies in four different levels. Uh, why we divided uh, in four levels? Because uh, we would like to understand uh, if, uh, um, obviously, uh, every surgeon, every surgery is completely different. So uh, when we made a, um, a, a biopsy, uh, depending the result, depending to the uh, to the hand from from the dentist, from the surgeon, and uh, depending also from the uh, typology of the uh, surgery. And uh, uh, so we have a lot of different, but uh, if uh, we have a, a lot of histology like this, uh, it's possible to observe where is uh, uh, the normality. So at the level three, we have uh, um, the, the 41% of, uh, of the cases. Uh, and uh, what means level three? Every level is uh, um, connected to the quantity of the newborn. So we have the 60%, the level one was uh, um, with uh, minus uh, the 30%, and uh, the 29 level is uh, minus 40%, and the 41 is minus 50%, and the 40% uh, is a measure of the 50%. So we can observe some uh, example. This is the level one where the bone is minus 30%. In this case, uh, the total bone is 31, but the new bone is only 50%. Uh, 
and the two transformer is 50%. So we can observe a lot of space between the granules uh, and uh, uh, some soft tissue between some granules. This is not a good uh, uh, result, but uh, uh, we don't know if uh, the, the, the possibility is uh, um, from, from the dentin or from the surgery. So the level two is born in, um, if the total newborn is 35%, for example, uh, the dentin is partially resorbent and uh, we have a good quality of newborn. And uh, the newborn is, in this case, in this image, is 29% and the two transformer is only 5%. Level three, this is the most common result uh, in uh, our hand. Uh, and uh, uh, you remember uh, this case is 40% of the total cases uh, uh, of the analysis of the um, histological analysis made. And uh, uh, in th this case, we have a newborn 40% and only the 6% of the dentin. So we can observe some granules like this, like this, like this, but uh, uh, most uh, uh, of the, the granules are completely resolved. And uh, this is level four. This is a goal uh, when we, we made this surgery, uh, is a, a complete surprise when we found this type of bone because this type of bone is uh, like a cortical bone and total bone in this uh, in this example is like 80%. It's very, very rare, but uh, only the 14% uh, of the cases uh, have this result, but we have. So uh, what happened uh, in X-ray evolution? This is an a, a example, 45, 48 months. Uh, this is 2060. Uh, 2017 in March, in May, we place implants, September, December, December. So what happened? Uh, it's very interesting because uh, it is possible to observe uh, the granules after some, some month, uh, four months probably, and uh, after one year disappear completely. And uh, in this case uh, we have a uh, uh, is impossible to understand where was uh, the defect uh, and uh, is impossible to understand where was the newborn. Um, this is very interesting analysis, uh, uh, is present inside the book um, because uh, we, um, we analyzed uh, the different results, histology, histomorphometrical results uh, between different uh, uh, typology of the surgical procedure. For example, we use uh, a normal collagen membrane in the first uh, uh, first case, and second case, and third case. Uh, we use only a collagen membrane to cover the the, uh, the graph material, and uh, we use a Begos collagen zimmer extend and uh, 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 the result is very interesting because the bone volume was 45 percent 44 with this collagen membrane and for, uh, 51 with this membrane um, obviously in that case we have 32 histologies so probably uh, we have a, a um, incidence of uh, um, bad result to 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 the uh, total volume, but uh, uh, it's interesting to observe if you use uh, a GGF, PRGF um, membrane only, uh, the result is completely different, but not too much different. So uh, I think uh, uh, the dentin have a high influence of the, uh, of the result in uh, GBR. So uh, this is the steps in, uh, in literature, First step was uh, in vitro result, so we, pub uh, we publish uh, some articles about uh, our study in uh, Polytechnic of Milan. And uh, for example, we analyzed the dimension, the dimension and the load of the tooth to, to be able to understand um, if you remove, uh, for example, a molar, uh, what is the, the quantity of material produced after the, the extraction and uh, when we place uh, a molar inside, uh, inside the device, how much is the material? Um, 
So um, one molar uh, is uh, normally like two grams. So if you place inside the device, uh, we have two grams of material. And uh, it's very uh, big quantity. And uh, sometimes uh, uh, if you remove a molar, uh, for example, a wisdom tooth, and uh, we need uh, to, um, to, to make a, a socket preservation, or I don't know, uh, um, periodontal problems, uh, we need only a little part of this, this tooth. So it's possible to cut this tooth, to use only one part, and to uh, store the other part for another, um, another situation in the same patient. So the second step was in vivo result. We made uh, some cases uh, uh, and uh, uh, the third step was a multicenter study uh, where we analyzed different uh, situations. For example, uh, the root canal therapy, uh, it's possible to use the tooth with root canal therapy. Yes, it's possible. We have the same result. And uh, uh, we compare, uh, for example, in this study, uh, the use of the whole tooth and the endodontical tube. And the under oh, sorry, the endodontical teeth, and the result is very similar. So it's not uh, uh, we don't have any different to use the, the endodontical treated uh, teeth uh, uh, and the wall teeth. Uh, so we analyze that also the the, the sinus leaf, and uh, uh, the step four was the compression with uh, other material where we, we place inside the same socket, uh, the teeth and the, the teeth with xenograph I showed you before. And uh, um, this is the result, it's very interesting because we have a big difference between the mixed with xenograph and alone. But it is possible and we have a good result also mixed also if, if we mix uh, uh, the, mm, the dentin with xenograph material. And the step four, five was the decidus tip. So we, we try to use the decidus tip because uh, in literature we have uh, a lot of analysis of the presence of the uh, BNP2 in uh, decidus tip. And uh, uh, it's interesting to understand uh, the quantity of the, the BNP2 is very high in the decidus tip. Uh, and uh, uh, so um, a source of uh, uh, graph material uh, is, uh, uh, is free is uh, from the only question is uh, to maintain during the time uh, and it's possible to place, uh, I, I show you before, in a plastic container and have a good result after uh, 20 years. So, um, all graph material are similar to the human bone, uh, but uh, they are not original human bone. Uh, why we use the, the tooth? Because the tooth is uh, original uh, autologous uh, mineralized bone. The only difference between uh, bone and, and dentin is the quantity of the mineralization. So uh, why we would like to use uh, um, the dentin? because we have a, a better quality of the newborn in a short time. And uh, another very interesting aspect is uh, uh, the interest of the patient about uh, this technique, because uh, every patient uh, uh, would like uh, to, to use uh, uh, the own part uh, uh, to make the, a regeneration. So, uh, for example, um, if uh, I would like to buy a, a Ferrari, uh, it's possible to, to, to buy a similar Ferrari or the original Ferrari. So uh, I think uh, uh, use the tooth is like uh, use the bone and uh, uh, the bone from the same patient, from the patient, autologous uh, uh, material, uh, with uh, uh, all, the, um, all the ability of the autologous material. So I finished my presentation. I think uh, is uh, uh, interesting for you. Uh, send me uh, if you have a question. I'm very sorry for the short time, but uh, uh -huh. uh, it's possible um, uh, to analyze in deep in, uh, you know, probably in four hours, uh, uh, but uh, it's not possible in a webinar. Yeah. 
You have the question, Professor Minetti. Yes, uh, I see. It is a problem that a patient wait for 30 minutes with an open wound. No, it's not a problem. Uh, um, normally, uh, we made all these cases in this way, and uh, we don't have uh, any type of problem. We place uh, a, uh, only one stitch, and uh, we wait 30 minutes. Uh, in, is is uh, is not a, a, a problem. Uh, obviously, uh, we open a flap. This is uh, only for the extraction. So, I I extracted the tooth. Uh, I don't open the flap. I wait uh, uh, thirty minutes. Uh, made something different, like another passion. And uh, after that, uh, I um, I made a surgery. So we I open the flap after thirty minutes. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, everything uh, is good, uh, and uh, the result uh, is uh, is uh, every day uh, optimal. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Professor. Thank you so much, uh, Doctor. I will send you for uh, email tomorrow for the contact and the all information about it. Thank you so much for all. Have a nice uh, evening. Good night. Thank you to all. Thank you to all. In the, if you have a question, send a, send a question to Diego or send me an email here. It's not a problem. I try to answer to all. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye.